learning bad news is actually the one thing I enjoy. Sonic Lost World is a 3D platformer developed by Sonic Team and released on the Wii U back in 2013, with a PC port following two years later. Seemingly ready to move on from the successful Boost series of games, Sonic Team steered the Sonic franchise in a new direction for its 8th generation debut. And of course, with every change Sonic Team makes, critical reception for Lost World was mixed. Digital Spy scored the game 4 out of 5 stars, stating, Sonic Lost World is a fresh and unique take on Sega's mascot that recaptures everything that was great about his 2D adventures, rights the wrong of his 3D outings, and takes him into uncharted territory. Electronic Gaming Monthly gave the game a 6.5 out of 10, noting, At its best, Sonic Lost World delivers some of the best platforming the series has seen in years, with an intriguing fusion of classic design and innovative 3D worlds. Unfortunately, the game simply can't maintain those temp temporary highs, resulting in an uneven, frustrating overall experience. Finally, GameSpot scored the game a 5 out of 10, proclaiming, Sonic Lost World is confused and derivative and tries far too hard to be clever without any clever design to back it up. Because this was a Wii U exclusive, I actually bought a Wii U along with Sonic Lost World in November of 2013, and a month or so later wrote my own review, declaring, The difficulty curve is just right, offering a nice challenge as the game progresses. Most of the little things are done well, and Lost World is a joy to play from beginning to end. It's hard not to like this title. So, after five years, has Sonic Lost World aged like a fine wine, or is the game really as bad as some suggest. Let's dive in. Lost World opens with an epic cutscene with Sonic facing off against Eggman. Eggman is flying around with a capsule full of flickies and Sonic orders him to drop them, which is of course foolish when flying around at great heights. With Sonic distracted trying to right his wrong, Eggman has a clear shot at Tails in the tornado, and the two heroes glide to a mysterious place called the Lost Hex. As best as I can tell, those flickies from moments earlier perished. And this this is kind of a metaphor for the rest of the story. Moments happen for seemingly no reason and are then quickly forgotten. Eggman's dastardly deeds don't stop there though. He procures a mysterious conk to control six Zeddy and then sends them off on flicky grabbing runs to fill up his robot army. Sadly, in foolish act number two, Sonic later kicks the conk out of Eggman's hands, freeing the Zeddy to use their mysterious powers to turn badniks against Eggman and Sonic. Though I'm not sure what beef the Zeddy have against Sonic. Anyway, in addition to temporarily enslaving the Deadly Six, Eggman also creates a machine to suck all of the energy out of the world. However, with their newfound freedom, the Deadly Six plot to use the machine for their own personal gain. This energy sucking contraption puts Amy and Knuckles right in harm's way, who briefly appear now and again to add some semblance of weight to the mission at hand. Anyway, the story has about as much depth as a Saturday morning cartoon, for better or for worse. But the goals are clear. Sonic and Tails team up with Eggman to take on the Deadly Six and set everything right on this mysterious continent and the world. Despite the team up, Sonic Lost World features just a single playable character, Sonic. However, this doesn't mean the game is without a signature gimmick. It's just a unique sense of gravity rather than multiple playable characters. In addition to the visual wizardry, the controls have been tweaked quite a bit, offering players a better sense of control. Sonic Sonic can walk at a brisk pace, but holding the right trigger will allow him to run. Pressing the left trigger will allow Sonic to spin dash, and pressing then holding the button a second time will allow Sonic to maintain the spin until an obstacle or enemy stops his progress. The double jump also returns, allowing for additional height or slight mid-air corrections. Finally, the homing attack has been drastically expanded. Sonic can bounce from enemy to enemy as he could since the 90s, but can also lock on to multiple multiple targets at once. The attack can also be charged, which is incredibly useful during boss fights. However, instead of doing a homing attack, the player can choose to kick, which is necessary on certain enemies or do a bounce attack. If this sounds like a lot of stuff, it kind of is, and the nostalgic part of me longs for the simple days where Sonic only required a single button. 
Oh yeah, Sonic can parkour as well. Whenever Sonic has this little sparkle around him, he is in a sort of parkour mode. From here, he can jump back and forth up vertical surfaces like a ninja and pull himself up ledges, saving him from death, which I like. This also works in the 3D sections, though like most critics, I used this in the same one or two spots on both of my playthroughs and never thought about it again. Still, the idea is interesting enough and does match some of the theatrics we've seen in many classic cutscenes up to this point. And if that wasn't enough, Sonic Lost World brings back the Wisps for another appearance. The Laser Wisp allows Sonic to bounce along scripted antennas, the Drill Wisp is used to drill through the ground, and even has a second, faster speed. The Rocket Wisp is used to launch from planetoid to planetoid, the Hover Wisp gives the power of hovering, but more importantly the ring dash, the Asteroid Wisp turns Sonic into a floating orb, which gets bigger as more stuff is accumulated, allowing higher jumps. The Eagle Wisp gives flight. The Rhythm Wisp offers a sort of mid-air jump thing. There's also a Quake Wisp in multiplayer and a Bomb Wisp, which I somehow avoided completely in my recorded run. When the game was first released, many of these required the use of the Wii U gamepad to execute, either utilizing the touchscreen or the controller's gyros. The game was patched shortly after release, allowing all of them to use the more traditional joysticks instead, except the Rhythm Wisp, which still requires requires the touchscreen. The touchscreen is also used on these little mini-games, which are a nod to the Atari 2600 game Circus Atari, but more on that later. Moving along, Sonic Lost World is structured like a traditional platformer. The game's 28 main stages are all unlocked sequentially and broken into seven distinct worlds. Windy Hill is the typical first Sonic zone with lush greens and blue skies. Desert Runes is a desert landscape. Tropical Coast is tropical. Frozen Factory is the obligatory frozen world. Silent Forest is a forest world. Sky Road is like Windy Hill, but in the sky, I guess. Finally. Lava Mountain is the fire world. If I sound unimpressed by these, it's because the themes themselves are mostly stale and rehashed. Both Sonic Unleashed and Sonic Colors did an awesome job with level theming, offering new twists on classic ideas, or just new ideas, period. Sadly, this level of creative theming is absent in Sonic Lost World. Instead, the main gimmick is the unique gravity. Many levels are either on a large tube, the player can freely zip around without falling off, or happen on a strictly 2D plane with the level rotating and twisting around Sonic. It is visually interesting and a nice apology for Mad Space. Sometimes the gimmick isn't used at all though, with some 2D areas being very traditional. Lost World features some more variety as well. In Zone 2 of Desert Rune, Sonic is basically in a free fall the entire level, not unlike the super speed sections in Sonic 06, where stopping is not an option. Another area has Sonic guiding apples into a juicer, creating warp tubes. Frozen Factory has Sonic spin up into a snowball, altering the gameplay with a drastically reduced moveset and increased vulnerability. Ability. There is also the most competent pinball ever found in a Sonic game, with excellent flipper and ball physics, giving the player an actual sense of control, which is nice. There is a flying area where pressing the button causes Sonic to spin towards the bottom of the screen, and pressing nothing keeps him at the top, like the reverse of the water areas in Sonic Colors. Last but not least are a pair of grinding levels. These are interesting enough, though the player can only change Sonic's inertia while jumping. When actually on the rail, the speed is static. However, there are green rails which cause Sonic to move faster and red rails which slow him down, offering speed changes during designated sections. Overall, it's a decent mix of 3D platforming, 2D platforming, with enough alternate gameplay styles to keep a player engaged without losing focus on the core mechanics. Visually, Sonic Lost World is still striking. First, the game runs at a constant 60 frames per second, something absent in the Boost trilogy. The game's high definition graphics are also terrific, though the game is not rendered at a full 1080p, which is a shame considering Nintendo was able to achieve this on the hardware. Still, the game has few technical faults to speak of. Sonic is animated beautifully, from his standard walk, the figure eight of his legs and run mode, and the smooth rolled up form. I also love 
of the alternate running and jumping animations when on ice. The polygon counts are sufficiently high, with round objects appearing round and nothing standing out as lower quality. The same could be said for the texture work. Textures are razor sharp and nothing looks even the slightest bit pixelated, and I really dig the shader effects found in many of the grassy areas. The paper mache like quality found in Windy Hill is amazing, and overall it's a massive leap forward over previous entries. I also appreciate the slight blur of the background, like they are out of focus, off in the distance. The overall art direction is ace as well. While I'm mildly disappointed the level themes are a bit overplayed, I do find the artists did a terrific job making these feel distinct and different. Harkening back to the 90s, most feature a ton of different geometric shapes and patterns, helping each world feel cartoonish and the colors are expertly chosen, offering a visually appealing pop with plenty of contrast, without getting too messy and confusing, cluttering up the screen. Overall, the presentation is clean and slick and there really isn't anything to complain about. Sonic Lost World is a beautiful game. The audio is great as well. The opening music in Windy Hill is really exceptional. The instruments chosen are super clean and vibrant, like the visuals, and each part of the song is super catchy, especially the chorus. It starts the game on a real high note and sets the tone for the adventure the player is about to embark on. It's also remixed a couple of times with new instrument arrangements which is awesome, adding even more variety. Desert Runes features Middle Eastern instruments with upbeat melodies, keeping the energy high but sounding sufficiently different than Windy Hill. The Desert level track sounds like it was ripped straight out of a candy shop. Tropical Coast has the ever-popular steel drums, which I'm an absolute sucker for. Frozen Factory has a nice poppy sound with a light touch of bells ringing in the background. The Casino level sounds like a Vegas show tune. Silent Forest opted for a lounge sound rather than a typical jungle sound, but again, the rich sound that fits perfectly with the rich environment. There's also some more atmospheric vibes as well, lacking the catchy hooks of some tracks, but do a nice job giving a moody atmosphere to the underground levels. I really have no complaints whatsoever. While not the best soundtrack in the series, falling somewhat short of the truly epic soundtracks in Sonic Adventure or Sonic 06, everything here is seriously high quality. Sonic Lost World checks all of the right platformer boxes. The graphics are great, as is the music. The game's structure is traditional, and there is a vast moveset giving players plenty of ways to tackle different challenges. Sonic Lost World should be a home run, a return to form, and a solid follow-up to the well-received boost games. Well, on paper, anyway. And that's into center field for a base hit. Sonic Lost World does have a few speed bumps which will trip up first time players, which is mostly related to the game not communicating gameplay elements properly to the player. Now, don't get me wrong, Sonic Lost World does communicate information to the player, all too frequently with text boxes, but also through thoughtful design. When the player walks forward here, for example, the apple moves towards the juicer, revealing the simple mechanic. But then there are other areas, like the dessert level in Desert Runes. These bird and enemies require a kick to be defeated, but there is no visual clue as to why this is necessary. Speaking of attacking oddities, the player is probably comfortable enough with the spin dash by the time they reach Tropical Coast, but some enemies are seemingly immune to the spin dash, again with no visual cue, like spikes alerting the player. This means at some point many players will abandon the spin dash altogether, and I suspect there are some areas which would be easier if utilized, but I'll never know. 
know. I'm also certain many newcomers got stuck in a loop in Frozen Factory Zone 1. The game will literally keep the player repeating the same section of the level until they find the one exact path leading forward. The first encounter with Zavik is also frustrating. The idea is to hit the serpent's tail so it falls and acts like a ramp for Sonic to climb up. The player is then tasked with using the homing attack on each segment until finally reaching Zavik, except it rarely works. And because the vulnerable period is temporary, players will have to repeat the cycle to get another try. And then there is Lava Mountain Act 2. The lack of on-rail speed control really becomes a problem in this zone, forcing the player to make leaps of faith in order to progress. The rails are littered with one-hit kill bomb carts that can only be cleared with a perfect perfectly timed double jump. The lack of any speed control also means the player is forced into awkward jumps without enough time to anticipate and learn the next pattern. Thankfully, after dying a few times, a power-up appears, allowing the player to skip to the next checkpoint. Granted, repeat playthroughs will alleviate most of these issues, but I can understand why a segment of the 2013 review seemed to repeat the frustration sentiment. However, frustrating moments are not limited to first-time playthroughs. The lock-on mechanic is flaky at best, and maddening at worst. This comes in the form of both its ability and inability to lock on to multiple targets at once and the charging mechanic. Sometimes it works great, allowing the player to quickly take out all targets at once. Other times it will only lock onto half the targets, and when it locks onto the rest, it loses the original ones. And of course, if one isn't careful, Sonic will lock onto unintended targets, which could potentially lead to death. The charging mechanic is also fussy. I'm still not even sure how the charging works. Sometimes Sonic needs to be in the air to get it to charge. Sometimes standing is fine. Sometimes a combination of both. I honestly have no idea what the intent is, but this makes boss fights very uneven. And man, are there a lot of boss fights. Through the first six worlds, the player will encounter a specific Zeddy twice, once in Zone 2 and a second time in Zone 4. Additionally, each will be encountered a third time during the final Lava Mountain world. Generally speaking, these fights work the same. Avoid an attack and then go on the offensive. Depending on one's luck or skill, one-hit knockouts are possible in some encounters with a fully charged shot. Unfortunately, some encounters feel sloppy with the unreliable mechanic. Worse yet, this fight with Savik requires the charge shot to knock him off the edge of a platform. But getting the reticle to fully charge can be a nightmare and will trick the player into thinking it is fully charged when it is not. This lack of visual guidance for certain attacks not working to the player's expectations is one of my biggest gripes against Sonic Lost World. In the original Sonic the Hedgehog, Badniks had clear visual cues on how to approach them, which basically meant not to touch the spiky bits. But this basic design approach is severely lacking in Sonic Lost World. This thoughtless approach seeps into the levels themselves. All too often, there just isn't much going on. Areas like the casino and desert are just long, vast hallways lacking in any sort of intricacy. There is also an emphasis on racing inside tubes, which doesn't really lend much in the form of platforming, just some enemy avoidance. The 3D areas also lead towards another control oddity. Sonic moves faster forwards and backwards than he does left and right. I assume the developers were compensating for the reduced visibility in 2D sections, but this feels very strange in 3D space. This means any adjustments left and right will reduce Sonic's speed. This can be avoided altogether with the spin dash, but yeah. That isn't to say the controls are bad per se. I like how Sonic can change directions quickly without power sliding, instead offering precise control. He also stops quickly, which works really well when avoiding projectiles. On the flip side, the jumping leaves something to be desired. It is hard to slow Sonic's momentum once in the air and nearly impossible to pick up inertia. The lack of precise mid-air controls makes it difficult to nab red star rings or land on small platforms. Granted, the game rarely requires this level of precision, but I would imagine completionist runs are needlessly tiresome thanks to non-intuitive jumping. Thankfully, Sonic Lost World isn't all underwhelming. There are 
some standout levels that I legitimately enjoyed. Areas like Silent Forest, Zone 2 have decent platforming challenges requiring quick reflexes and skills to be successful and work within the confines of the wonky jumping. The same can be said for Sky Road Zone 2. Here the platforms will collapse, meaning the player needs to move quickly, but the timing of the collapsing platforms works perfectly with the regular walking speed, while running can be utilized to snatch red star rings. Lastly, Lava Mountain Zone 3 is a race up a level as it sinks into lava. While the parkour is a little strange in 3D space, in 2D space it works just fine, allowing for a fun way to traverse up vertical spaces. Sadly, there really aren't any standout 3D areas, and most feel simple and basic, lacking real challenge. In fact, if the levels were flattened out instead of tubular, they would look and feel exceptionally dated. But back to the positives. Sonic Team has again produced a game with a terrific camera. Manual control is never allowed, but the game always provides just the right view for the situation at hand. Enemies, obstacles, and surprises are never an issue. I should also commend the game for being virtually glitch-free, outside of the homing reticle of course. Collision detection is excellent, the camera never gets stuck, and everything pretty much works exactly as one would expect. That isn't meant to dismiss the reticle inconsistencies, because they are annoying, but the level of polish here is quite high, from the graphics and audio to the overall presentation. It feels like a finished product, with few signs of the game being rushed to meet a deadline or padded out to increase playtime. While lacking in padding, Sonic Lost World does have a few minor objectives. Those red star rings are not just a completionist bonus, and grabbing a few will be necessary to unlock circus tents on the map screen. These circus tents feature the Circus Atari type bonus games noted earlier. Here, the player will use the stylus and the touch screen to move the bottom paddle across the screen, launching Sonic, Tails, or Cubot into balloons. Inside the balloons are trapped flickies. Flickies are important because the fourth zone of each world actually has a specific requirement before the zone unlocks. But don't worry, this is not as tedious as nabbing Sun and Moon medals in Sonic Unleashed. Instead, there's an actual incentive to destroy badniks and rescue those critters, as well as stop and break capsules when they are encountered, and then in turn an incentive to at least grab a few red star rings. It's not tedious either, and on this recorded run I never had to revisit the level to track down either item. Things just unlocked naturally with a little bit of situational awareness. Anyway, the circus tents actually put the touchscreen to excellent use, with direct and responsive inputs making these brief side quests fun rather than tedious. Unlike the Wisps, where the touchscreen and gyro support felt shoehorned in, in these minigames the control offered is actually superior to traditional input methods. I also enjoy some of the dialogue in Sonic Lost World. While much of the Sonic Colors camp or cringe is back, there are some genuine moments of charm here. I I love how we see Eggman stuffing flickies into robots and later complaining the animals gathered by the Zeti are not up to par. And I love when Orbot asks Sonic if he can be Sonic's sidekick with some genuinely clever dialogue. No matter what happens, I won't fail again. I will save Tails. It's stuff like that that makes me want to be your sidekick. Tails is lucky. But not only is the story charming at times, Tails is absolutely a rock star here. Sonic wasn't content with losing a capsule at the beginning of the story or kicking the conch shell later. He also falls for a trap set by the Zeti, but Tails saves him. While captured, Tails uses his ingenuity and smarts to prevent himself from being turned into a robot, ultimately leading to the tree of success. In many ways, Tails feels like the brains of the operation, and it's nice to see him with the confidence he's earned over the years. Moving along, let's enter the spoiler section of the review. As Sonic and Tails go to turn off the energy-sucking extractor machine, they learn it has already been mysteriously powered down. Eggman then arrives announcing he has used the energy to power up a new mech, and the final boss fight kicks off. The fight itself is pretty easy. The mech has just three attacks, lasers to jump over, blasts to dodge, and a crushing attack 
attack to double jump over. After dodging a few attacks, Eggman will move in and the player can finally homing attack causing damage. Complete this loop a couple of times and it's over. From here, Sonic acknowledges he should have just trusted Tails instead of ignoring him. Tails returns the stolen energy back to the world, Knuckles and Amy make another minor appearance, the Zeddy are never addressed, and the credits roll. So, with all of that out of the way, we arrive back to the question asked at the beginning of the video. How does Sonic Lost World stack up five years later? First, I'm happy Sonic Lost World doesn't fall into the obvious traps of earlier 3D outings. The game's final level isn't hiding behind six playthroughs, for example. One doesn't need to obtain seven Chaos Emeralds either. It's just a normal 28-stage romp with about four to five hours of gameplay. While there are minor roadblocks to progress, the Circus Tent minigame offer a healthy amount of flickies while being sufficiently brief and also of good quality. The overall speed of the game is satisfying as well. Sonic can move really fast, which is somewhat disguised by the generous camera angle. I also appreciate Sonic can also move at a normal pace without having to futz with the halfway movements of an analog stick. This isn't unprecedented either, as the Werehog also featured a run button, and it worked great there as well. Now, I've heard a lot of complaints about the help system, with the player having to look down at the touch screen, touch the icon, and then the game pauses. But of course, this can be ignored entirely, and the icon will disappear. I found this too worked rather well, as I didn't have to actively avoid icons on the play field on repeat playthroughs. The last main complaint is the lack of dimension with the Deadly Six. Each Zeddy fits into a stereotypical role. Zaz is the crazy one, Zamam is the plump one, Master Zika is the Yoda one, Zor is the emo one, Xena is the share one, and Zavik is the leader. Each character offers little depth and is merely fodder for Sonic. One might find this disappointing, but Sonic and Eggman are also standard hero and villain characters, so it's hard for me to find this offensive. And all cutscenes are skippable. However, while Sonic Lost World fails to commit any serious gaming sins, it also fails to do anything significant either. At its core, this is a painfully basic platformer. Sure, there is a ton of window dressing, but when one peels back the shiny paint, all that's really left is a dull coat of primer. Just like the capsule from the opening scene, things exist in Sonic Lost World just because, without any real rhyme or reason. While I am not particularly bothered by the continuous inclusion of wisp power-ups despite their apparent departure in Sonic Colors, the new ones introduced in Sonic Lost World feel tacked on rather than integrated into the game, like in Sonic Generations. The Asteroid, Eagle, and Rhythm Wisps are almost completely pointless and are never used in clever ways, adding depth or variety to the gameplay. They're just sort of there. Same goes for the new attacks. Sonic's ability to charge up the homing attack seems to exist for no other reason than an attempt to evolve the formula. Unfortunately, at either doesn't work properly, breaks certain boss battles, or locks onto undesirable targets. It doesn't move the Sonic franchise forward, it's just different to be different. Thankfully, despite the jank, Sonic Lost World offers a ton of extra lives thanks to bountiful rings. This means even when the controls do fail the player, not much ground is lost thanks to generous checkpoints. While it seems the designers tried to steer Sonic towards combat, it ends up feeling repetitive rather than engaging, having to defeat six or eight of the same enemies in a row, using the same exact attacks over and over just to unlock the way forward, isn't offering a reward for successful combat. This is the exact opposite of Sonic Unleashed, which offered a rich combat system where learning the moves drastically increased the speed at which a player could beat a level, an actual tangible reward for proficient play. The parkour system also seems drastically underutilized. It's almost never required, meaning it is rarely used used, meaning most players won't look to use it to its fullest potential. Same goes for the graphical style. There are no clever puzzles or platforming challenges added thanks to the new physics. Instead, it's more likely to be a hindrance, like a funhouse mirror. There are just so few moments in Sonic Lost World that I can point to and say, yeah, this was well designed and tested me as a player. Sky Road Zone 4 briefly tests the player's ability to recognize patterns to avoid enemies or snatch rings, but it's again just too brief. 
In fact, the most creatively implemented move is the stomp. It can be used to break through certain platforms, rewarding attentive players with red star rings. It's also used perfectly in the final encounter with Zavik. The player is tasked to stomp blocks, causing them to fall onto the boss. But there is a timing element as well, as Zavik isn't always exposed. The player also needs dexterity to land on a different platform after performing the maneuver. I wish more boss encounters required timing and dexterity, but sadly, most are of the primitive variety. Therefore, in the end, I find Sonic Lost World to be underwhelming, and not because of superficial things like hint boxes, shallow characters, or run buttons, but rather because the platforming is shallow. Sonic Lost World never requires anything from the player, like skill, and in return, it never offers anything to the player either. There is rarely anything clever happening, and therefore, there is little reward for playing it. The game just sort of happens, and then it's done. Sonic Lost World does have a heart, the vivid visuals, the pleasing audio, and the occasional charming moments, but what it lacks is a soul.